Hello and welcome to Elden Ring. So I finally bought it. I mean, I'm always late to the party, so a year isn't too bad for me. Um, so I've played around with it. I haven't watched any of the cutscenes, so I don't really know the story, but obviously I wanted to test it to see if it, I can actually record it. And also this will probably be the first real test because I've changed a few settings and we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, let's get on with it. So, there's quite a few characters to choose from here. Uh, a few classes. Um, I love the look of the Prophet. I think it looks great. Um, the Samurai obviously ticks a lot of boxes for me. Um, however, the Confessor looks really cool. They are... I suppose they're... I think there might be a, I don't know if they're a faith or an arcane build or intelligence build. I'm not too sure. But they look like these sort of holy warriors that I kind of like. So I think I might just start off with that. And this is pretty much a test really to see if the recording works out okay. And, you know, we go from there. So I'm going to pick... Um, I don't know which that is. I did save uh, a template for a character. I don't know how you find that. Hmm. Uh, load favourite. Here we go. So this is the one I'm going to choose. Age. I don't think it matters. And because I was going to go for the profit type, but I think I'm going to go for this one because you've got a sword and a shield. So let's go for a name. And this is a name that I use in my D&D &D campaigns for a kind of cleric sort of build. So we'll go with that. Um, age, I don't think it matters, but we'll go young. Seems to have changed the, the look. Yep, that's fine. So we're going to go for Confessor. Now I understand that the Confessor has some magic as well. Uh, they have a heal spell, which I'm a big fan of. And they've got like a stealth thing. So, But once we get in there, you'll see it. Uh, and we're going to choose Golden Seed because it increases our Estus Flasks, which is really beneficial. Um, I'm not sure what the others do. Uh, I think one of them increases HP. I'm not too worried about that. Um, and then, yeah. So we're going to go Golden Seed. So we get the guaranteed uh, Estus. And I'm going to watch all the cutscenes because I haven't seen them yet. And yeah, it's been a long time coming. I should have bought this ages ago. After my little play around, I thought, yeah, this is the one I should have got. Although... I will still go back to the Dark Souls Tell because it's very you. different. The great Elden Ring was shattered. In our home, across the fog, the lands is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered the shattering. A war from which 
much no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. So that was intense. Are these are these the ones we need to find? And one other whom Grace would again bless. That must be us. A tarnished of no renown. Become the Elden Lord. Okay, we're in. So, this is our character. Looking pretty cool. And that was a very intense intro. Again, pretty vague. Didn't really tell us what we've got to do, but we'll figure it out. Okay. So I'm going to pick up everything, I'm going to read everything. So a tarnished finger, I think it might be a PvP thing. Used to write messages to other worlds, okay, so I'm not going to probably do that. But it's there. I think I need to adjust the sound a bit. Uh, audio. Where is the audio? Master volume, okay. Right, hopefully that's a little bit easier on the ears. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if my PC can deal with this. Because apparently I need a RX 580 as minimum, and I've got a RX 570. So, but it's an eight gig card, so maybe that will counteract it. But we'll find out. So we're gonna have a little wander through. Yeah, and uh, there is a boss here, but. It's kind of like, you know, you. this is welcome to Elden Ring. We don't have a chance of killing it. I'm sure people have killed it. But yeah, you. it's part of the story. And I haven't seen this cutscene, so I haven't seen any cutscenes.
current. Fortune is on her side. We found her here after all. One of her kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. Okay, so it seems like we're not necessarily, I think we might be undead, we don't look rotten, but we're tarnished, the cave of knowledge, so down here is the tutorial area, I don't know if I need to show it, but I will get some souls, uh, I don't think they're called souls in this, I'm not sure, grace maybe. So it might be worth just going through just to see. So it gives us instructions. So use your item. If you're on PC, it's R to drink your flask. And the thing is, a lot of uh, guides and playthroughs I've seen are based on console. So if you are a PC player, you'll get to learn what the PC controls are, which are quite different. And you know, there's a lot of sort of shifts and controls and buttons pressed to get it to go. Okay, so we've uh, we can rest there if we need to. We use the flask, so it might be worth it. These are like your bonfires, and because we pick the golden seed, we can add a charge to our flask, which means we get an extra one straight away. Which can't be a bad thing. Um, yeah, so what we do, we go through the little tutorial zone, kill some people, and yeah, it tells you attack right hand or two hand with the left button. So, yeah, so that's for sorceries. Let's just take him out. So, my sorceries are Assassin's Approach and Urgent Heal. Um, so yeah, I'm sure we'll get to use them at some point. So this is your basic sort of dodging. If you've played a Souls game before, you know about this. If you haven't, dodging is quite beneficial. Um, because when you dodge, you get invincibility frames, which means the opponent can't hit you for a certain period of time. And here, we can pick up materials as well. So I think... My plan is just to pick up everything that looks pick upable. And yeah, so we're getting a few things here just by doing the tutorial area. Uh, here it's about switching left and right armament, armament, armament. But it says left, right, so you use your left, right arrows, but that's not a good idea. A good idea is to hold shift and then use the mouse wheel up and down to select what you need to select and my game's crashed okay we're back so my game crashed um, let's take this guy out so yeah I'm struggling already in the tutorial zone okay that's it so yeah sorry about that my PC had a little bit of a meltdown so I've got Urgent Heal and I've got uh, Assassin's Approach and to use that it's like a Cleric in my left hand I've got this item and yeah I've 
press it and I heal. And yeah, that's what I was saying. So shift and down changes your shield to whatever you have in that hand. And shift and up changes your weapon. So, you know, it's just handy to know. So we're going to try and do backstabs. We're going to try and do parries. We're going to try and do everything we can because we don't have a lot of armor and a lot of health. So we'll just do these kind of things. Now, having knowledge of the previous games makes a difference, especially with parry and stuff like that. But if you've never played it before, just follow the instructions and it tells you. And skills. Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah, so in this as well, compared to the others, you can actually do sort of stealth sneaking, which we'll be doing a lot of with this character. And yeah, you can hide in the in the bushes and things like that. Obviously it tells you what you can and can't do. But then once you finish a tutorial zone, it's like, here's the world, get on with it. Okay, so we've got a charge attack, which is shift and left click. And it does more powerful attacks, apparently. And the longer you hold it, it looks like the harder you hit. Now these stakes of Marika are really good, because if you use... If you lose your souls or your grace in this game, you don't have to go all the way back to uh, a bonfire type thing. You can use one of them uh, statues of Marika and it will take you pretty close to where you died, providing there's one available. So here we've got a guard counter. So basically you, dot, you block, as soon as it hits, you press shift and left mouse button which I believe is like a power attack to counter it so let's try and yeah I pressed it too soon so yeah as soon as you yeah so basically as soon as you block use a powerful attack and it will sort of do a riposte uh, I messed it up, but it don't matter. I've got some flasks, so we'll carry on. And that is the tutorial area. Obviously, if you want to spend more time in there, you can. And I think it's probably best if we just get on with the game. <laughs> and I'll probably cut this bit out. And I'll start the video again once we open these doors. No, we won't. We'll keep going. Okay, welcome to Elden Ring. So I've finally bought it after a year. I'm always late to the party. But, you know, I was I was involved in the other Dark Souls games. So, you know, it was just a matter of time. And this video is a test, really, to see if, A, my PC can handle it. Because from what I'm seeing, it looks pretty good. But once you've recorded it and uploaded it, it might be different. So that's the first test. The second test is, is it any good? All I've heard is that it's good. So we'll, we'll see. Um, and I have played around with it a little bit. Just to, you know, sort of check the settings and see how it runs. And, and I've adjusted the settings so that it should record okay but like I said before it's a bit of a test to see how the end result is I've chosen the confessor because I like the whole sort of religious holy side of things but this one if we look at the stats has a high level of faith which is what I wanted because from my Dark Souls 1 playthrough I quite enjoyed using the faith spells and it's nice to have a heal uh, on top of your flasks. The strength and dexterity is 12 so we can uh, modify that as we go and yeah I mean uh, mind I'm not sure how important that is and intelligence is 9 and arcane is 9 so we're, we're basically a faith 
fighty build that's the plan and that's what I'm going to go for we've got two spells we've got assassin's approach which makes our steps quiet and we also have urgent hill which is a nice little hill on top of our flask so let's rest and yeah and I don't really know where I'm going I don't know what weapons I'll pick up or whether I'll go sort of strength or dex or whatever and we'll just see how it goes but the aim is to pick the faith stuff um, I might as well rest here and yeah so I did already start the game and I picked the I can't remember the name of it I'll put it up on the screen but it's a item that can upgrade your flask so if you look at the bottom left of the screen my flask of crimson tears is at four that normally starts at three so because I got that item I've got four um, and that's the only thing you've missed and you did miss the intro but I'm sure you can see that somewhere if you really want to or if you want to see it from me I'll put it up but yeah so let's crack on so this is about multiplayer not really going to be doing that on this playthrough and the finger sever and the tarnished fold finger are uh, PvP or co-op items which I'm not going to do I don't like the co-op thing so let's go but yeah I hope you all had a good Christmas so for me recording now it's Boxing Day evening Christmas Day I actually got Hero Quest the board game as a Secret Santa gift which was absolutely amazing <laughs> and so yeah me and my family I wrote them into playing Hero Quest on Christmas Day and it was brilliant very simple game very easy to play but it was what got me into D&D &D, which in turn got me into fantasy which in turn got me into fantasy PC games anyway so we've come through we've we're touching our grace which is like the bonfire um, and the thing is with this it kind of points you in the right direction to where you need to go so if you see that that light so we need to go that way towards that church which we will be following to a certain extent let's talk to this person and yeah there's a map so if you've played all the other Dark Souls games you might wonder what a map is basically it's a thing that shows you where you are in the world so here we it's unco you know it's covered it's like fog of war but we can see where we just lit the bonfire so to speak and they were the starting areas so let's have a look we're going towards that church but let's speak to this npc oh yes tarnished are we come to the lands between for the elden ring hmm? yep of course you have no shame in it Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Uh, thanks, I guess. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless. Me, Vare. <laughs> really? Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace? The golden light that gives life to you tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, a path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Sounds perfect. Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly. 
the castle Stormvale, over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod, Godric Adrastid. So from my understanding, that would be the first boss. It's time you set off, I should think, to Castle Stormvale on the cliff, where Grace would guide you. If you seek the Elden Ring, maidenless as you are. So we need to find our maiden, and if we follow the route, I have a feeling we will probably die because we have quite a big area to explore before we get to that point which is covered by fog so anyway let's start um, start on our quest and yep yeah, I'm going to be picking up stuff as we go and it will become relevant later on um, here these effigies are summoning pools. You'll find it easy to summon other players at these locations. So yeah, if we're going to be doing that, we can do that. I don't think I'm going to be doing it. So that church there is our goal. But there's a great big dude there who is pretty famous, I think. We can try and fight him, but he'll probably kill us. So is it worth just seeing what we're dealing with here? Let's just try it and see. Let's see if my Dark Souls skills will come into play. Yeah, no. So we'll come back to him later. I just wanted to see what kind of damage I did and what kind of damage he did. So, you know. We're looking at two hits and we're dead. And one hit on him didn't do anything. So we'll come back. And the good thing about this is if you die, if you look at the map just at the top, you can see it says north, east, west. That symbol is our, our grace. But it's right next to him. So we're going to ignore that and just carry on. <laughs> so basically I just wasted my items there. So we go over to these ruins here and pick up these bits and bobs. So ruin fragment, don't know what that does. And another one. Oh yeah, and we do have a jump button. So previous Dark Souls players will find this a bit of a luxury. Uh, on the mouse and keyboard it's an F. F to jump. And yeah, run in is spacebar, and roll in is spacebar. And here we are, Church of Ella. So a smithing table is pretty much like when you go to Andre and get your weapons upgraded using smithing stones. So if we have a quick look, strength and armament, armament. So to strengthen our sword, we need two smithing stones. At the moment, we've got one. So, you know, we're 50% of the way there. And let's talk to this guy. You're a tarnished. I can see it. But I can also see that you're not after my throat. Then why not purchase a little something? I am Carly, purveyor of fine goods. I mean, I would buy something, but I got killed so but yeah to buy stuff you, obviously you need your I don't know if it's grace points or whatever that it's called here but I will be buying these cookbooks because in this game we can actually craft items and the more of these cookbooks you find the more items you can uh, make and then to make items you need a crafting kit so I might do a little run to get my souls back and then buy these few items. That's the plan. Let's see if we can do it. And there's another uh, site of grace here that we can uh, we'll trigger that. And we can fast travel in this. 
So just like in Dark Souls 3 and Dark Souls 2 you can travel but here we do it from the map and you'll see that at some point. Let's try and get my souls back, my grace back. So there's the guy. So what I could do actually is use Assassin's Approach so that he won't hear me come in. Maybe, I can still hear me footsteps. But we got what we need. Let's grab them. So yeah, X on the keyboard makes you cr crouch and creep. There's an item here. Golden runes. Now golden runes are like your soul items, where you pop them and you get more grace. So let's go and buy a few things from this guy. So I'm going to buy the crafting kit. How much have I got left? 300 left. So I think that's it. These things give you knowledge. Flask of Wondrous Physic. Let's buy that. Goodbye. And then nice we'll go to, to our this. inventory. Yes. And where was that book? Okay, so, oh, it's there. The Flask of Wondrous Physic. So we examine using our notes sold by Nomadic Merchant. Yep. A flask of wondrous physics still remains in the third church of Marica, north of the Mistwood. Cross the highway bridge and follow the animal trail. Right, so we don't know where that is yet, but handy to know. So, in this instance, we'll have a quick look at the map, and this is where we're going to head to. This thing here, because whenever you see one of these, it's a map that will open up the map. So let's go that way. Now I don't know how this is coming across on the video. For me it's a little bit jittery. Which isn't good. But we'll pick things up as we go. Uh, yeah, I don't know where to go. So I'm going to follow that, that arrow. No, I'm going the wrong way. Let's go this way. Another thing about this is open world, so you can really explore everything. You know, you're not really cut off from anything. I think I might have gone the wrong way. I have, so I need to go northeast. <laughs> northeast is this way. Right, and there's stuff. Okay, let's kill these things. So there's skulls that glow on the floor as well, and to get them you have to kind of crush them. Like that. Once we get the horse, you can just tread on them. So let's take these out. So these sometimes drop stuff. Don't know what. Okay, I nearly got poisoned then. Okay, so they didn't drop anything. Let's get back to this. So we're going northeast. Okay, so there's a guy here. Let's see if we can sneak up on him. And obviously with this this class you don't have a lot of armour so any advantage you get is always going to be good. And we got throwing knives which I believe cause bleed. So yeah if I can kill all of these without getting spotted it will be good. Okay, and here's one of these uh, 
these statues. So if we die in there, we can either choose to come back to this statue or back to the Grace. So obviously we'll pick that. But I do know a little bit about the introduction of this place. So I'm going to walk around. And I'm going to avoid all of them enemies. enemies. All of them enemies. Because there's a sight of grace just here. And we're going to rest here. So yeah, this isn't really like a walkthrough. It's more like a, I have a little bit of knowledge about the beginning. But not enough to educate you really. Apart from this first bit. Greetings, traveller from beyond the fog. I am Melina. I offer you an accord. Okay. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? Nope. They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are Maidenless. I can play the role of Maiden, turning wounds into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. Um, yep, we'll do that. Then it's settled. Summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. Ah, another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. Spectral Steed Whistle. Yep, I'll take it. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. Okay, so here we can level Shall up. I turn your runes to strength. Let my hand rest upon you. For but a moment. Share them with me. For okay, so this is leveling up like it is in the ambitious. others. I have only got 268, so I can't do it yet. Um, but the stats we've got. So Vigor increases our hit points. HP, health points. I'm not sure what that's called, but yeah. Uh, mind does FP which is the if you use magic which I've got a little couple of bits of magic it uses the other flask which is like your mana basically and FP increases the amount you have endurance um, does your stamina like it always did and also it increases your equip load so if you want to wear heavier armor you need a higher endurance strength and dexterity are good for whatever weapons you want to go for so i'm probably going to be leveling these up quite close together because i don't know what i'm going to be picking up um we'll see uh, but that increases your damage depending on what type of weapon you use intelligence is for your magic so if you're casting spells we're not casting spells at the moment so that's why that's low faith is for your they're not called miracles in this they're called something else i can't remember what but i believe the spells that i have are faith spells which obviously the better our faith the better those will be and, and i'm planning on doing a kind of cleric paladin style 
playthrough. That's the idea. And Arcane increases your discovery rate, which I didn't know about. So that will be what enemies drop and stuff and what you find. So there we go. We can't do any of them at the moment, so let's come out of this dialogue. Um, and yeah, we can summon our horse. So this tells you if you hold down E and press these buttons you can use what's in that hot bar but I don't know how to do the left and right one only the up and down and once I figure it out with PC controls I'll let you know so what I'm gonna do at the moment is go to equipment and then now where is it now how do I equip my horse oh yeah so over here you can see pouch this is where we're going to put our horse so memory of grace i don't want that there because that basically uses all your uh grace that you've found and it teleports you back a bit like the is it the dark ring or something whatever it's called in the other dark souls game so i'm going to remove that from the pouch but what i am going to do is put this whistle on there so what I can do is hold down E and press and roll up on the mouse and I get my steed which is pretty cool and you can jump and you can double jump and also you can fight on the horse as well so left mouse button hits on that side right mouse button on the other side and you can press space to do a boost and you can F to jump so that's the horse so what I'm going to do now is that I know to do this because I've done it before. We're going to teleport back to that church. Uh, this one. Because there's an NPC there that we need to speak to. And it's good to know this because I, di I didn't know about this until after a while and then I found it. But this will help a lot once we get there so you know these are things that i know about this that are going to help us so we speak to this npc a here a pleasure to meet thee tarnished i am the witch Rena. i'd heard tell of a tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed and upon looking into the matter the talk i surmise is of thee thou art possessed of the power no to call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. I can do that. Ah, as I had hoped, I was entrusted this for thee by Torrent's former master. So we got the spirit calling bell. I'll show you what that does in a sec. And we got the lone wolf ashes. Tis a bell of calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree. The spirits will obey thine command but briefly, as they recall battles past. Now it is thine to do it as thou wishest. Thank you very much. So you use the spirit calling bell and it summons these spirits, which is like summoning NPCs in a way, but we can do this whenever touched, we're in a difficult area. And we shall again meet. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder, before the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers? Okay, so we've exhausted her dialogue, so I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna travel back to here. And I'll show you about the bells. So if you look on the left of the screen where it says square off, there's like a gate, a spirit gate. Whenever that shows, you can call a, call forth the spirits. So I'm going to put them into my pouch. Here they are. And you pick up different ones as you go along. So in the pouch now I've got, if I hold down the E button, I've got Torrent, 
or I've got the spirits. So what we're going to do, this little area here is full of enemies and there's one particularly tough enemy. So in the next episode we're going to take out this camp and we're going to kill the boss and we're going to, well he's not really a boss but he's a harder enemy. We're going to kill him and then we're going to get all the loot and then we're going to be happy. So that was a little introduction. Like I said, it was a bit of a test to see how well it would record. Um, and if all is going well and it records fine and I can upload it, I'll see you in the next episode where we take on this camp encampment. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more Elden Ring, press like and subscribe. You know what to do. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to getting started in this like properly. Like I said before, I played around a little bit. But now I've got an idea of what the NPCs have said. We can then start on the adventure proper. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next episode. See you later.